as an anesthesiologist, I was studying how anesthesia takes away consciousness. And I still think that's the best way to understand the scientific basis of consciousness by figuring out how anesthesia works. And it's, it, it's amazing that um, uh, anesthesia works on all animals and even plants and uh, suggesting that they all have some, some consciousness. And they all act in the same way. Be, we know that because uh, if you, you can uh, correlate their potency in putting any animal uh, or human to sleep with their solubility in a particular solubility parameter, which is uh, in, in, in the brain in uh, what's called nonpolar region. So everybody says the brain is too warm, wet, and noisy, which would prevent uh, uh, quantum events because they have to, in the laboratory, they're made it, done at absolute zero temperature to avoid decoherence. Um, and the brain is 70% water, the body is 70% water. But within that other 30% are things like proteins and microtubules within which are uh, aromatic rings like benzene or indole rings. And uh, these are found in, in uh, neurotrans psychoactive neurotransmitters and psychedelics, for example, and uh, aromatic amino acids. So there's this environment within the protein buried inside. There's no water. Oil and water don't mix. And these are oil-like molecules. So it's not wet. Uh, it is warm, but it's not noisy because the microtubules are oscillating coherently at multiple frequencies. They're kind of like a time crystal. So that gets around the problem of, uh, of decoherence and allows for, uh, for consciousness, we think. 